Hey, this is Bob Flaherty, the Electric Principal. Hey, I am going to talk a little bit about a subject that when people buy cars, a lot of times salespersons just don't have the time to really um, talk about these apps. And so people learn by trial and error. You know, car dealers want you out in less than an hour uh, from beginning to end of the purchasing process. And uh, that, that, that would be the ultimate goal, right? And, and maybe they're going to give you 30 minutes to deliver a car. Well, electric cars just take longer. So what I want to do is give you um, a brief guide to a number of apps uh, that I find really helpful. Uh, for people who are just beginning to drive electric cars. And the first one, maybe the most important one, is your car app. Every electric car comes with its own uh, application uh, that, that makes owning an electric car so much easier. Doesn't matter the company. Now, some are better than others. I realize that. I've, I've had some experience with apps that didn't work all that well. But most of them are great. Uh, and so you need to know that app and get help with that app. Uh, the other thing I like is PlugShare. It's a community-based uh, application for finding charging stations. I think it's great uh, because it gives you the latest, greatest uh, information about that charger that you're trying to go to and whether it's working or not, which is kind of important. You don't want to drive 80 miles and have 10 miles left in the tank uh, of electricity and then all of a sudden the charger's down. That's what you don't want. The other app I'm going to show you is ChargePoint. ChargePoint is a company that produces electric chargers and puts them pretty much across the country. And I love their chargers. I love their app. Makes it so simple. And you know what? Charge points are reliable, man. They are really good chargers. And then, of course, there's Electrify America. Even if you're driving a Tesla, you need to have Electrify America. Because, hey, uh, uh, they charge at 350 kilowatts when they're up and running correctly. Uh, and they're good chargers. And in a car like an Ionic 5 or Ionic 6, it just it makes your car charge in a hurry. And besides, for me, it's free for two years, right? I just bought an Ionic 5, so I get two years for free. So, of course, I'm going to use that app. Uh, the next app is, is, once again, a routing app. It kind, of, it kind of helps you find chargers, but it routes you to your destination and shows you all the chargers along the way. Very Tesla-like. That, that, that's its express purpose, uh, to show you all the chargers up ahead, how long you have to charge, uh, and how much energy you're going to have in the tank when you finish that right. And finally, everybody needs to have the Tesla app now. You just do. Uh, because in Colorado, there are five uh, superchargers that have the magic dock. And so I can use a Tesla charger now, and that is doing nothing but spreading. And shortly, folks, you're going to have an adapter for your car. I don't care whether it's a BMW, a Volkswagen, uh, if it's a, a Ionic 5, or a Mini Cooper S, uh, electric, of course, uh, you're going to need that particular app because you're going to be able to charge at those stations with a simple adapter, and I can't wait till that world really unfolds uh, fully. So, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through each one of those apps, and I'm going to start with Blue Link. Now, uh, folks, I have used all kinds of apps because I've owned 11 electric cars. Uh, it's, it's, I know that sounds... Uh, uh, unrealistic, but it's true. I'm kind of an addict. I've, I've used a lot of them. Um, and uh, uh, of all the car apps I've used, the two best I have used are the Tesla app and Blue Link. And Blue Link is, is uh, located over here. It's called My Hyundai. And you'll see a little Blue Link up here. That's kind of how it works. And if I tap that app, uh, it takes me into my 23 uh, Ionic Five, right? It's going to tell me 60%. Um, it's right now charging. I've got this thing on a, uh, on a, a Weasley level two charger right now that only charges at five amps. I don't know what's going on at, at, at here, but just five amps. That's all we're getting out of this at, at, at my workplace. It tells me the range, but you know the best part of this app and what makes electric cars great is right here, Climate Start. If I just tap Climate Start, I enter the wonderful world of how comfortable can I get? That's why I own electric cars, not just because of speed and torque. I want to be comfortable. 
And so when I look at this app, it shows me some, some variations. I can put it on summer, which simply means it's going to blow that air conditioner uh, for 15 minutes as hard as it goes. And I can turn this on from anywhere in the world that I have access to Wi-Fi. Don't even need to be close, right? We've got a winter setting, which is right now kind of my, my preferred setting. It turns on the defroster, car up to 82 degrees, blast that. It also turns on my heated steering wheel, which is really, really nice. And then I've got what I call my Colorado setting, because we have winter in Colorado uh, up, up in the northern country, the northern uh, uh, high desert here, but it's not like winter that I'm used to in Wisconsin. Right now, Wisconsin's getting pounded by a foot of snow. And in northern Wisconsin, that snow's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere till April or May. But here in Colorado, I mean, you think we get a lot of snow. We really don't when it comes to living in Fort Collins. Uh, you know, we might get snow, get a couple inches, then it's gone. And a lot of mornings, there's no frost on the windows. So I developed this standard winter setting. Let me show you what that looks like. I have decided that I want it set as the default preset. So when I hit this, this is what I'm going to get. I've got the cabin set at a comfortable 72 degrees. I can set it to anything I want, but 72 seems like a reasonable temperature when it's only 35 out. I think I'll be comfortable. All right, I've got the defroster off because that uses a lot of energy and I don't want to do that unless I have to. I've got the rear window side and mirror defroster, which I guess doesn't really make sense because I'm not turning on the main defroster, but that uses so little energy, who cares? And then I've got the ever important steering wheel heater on. So that's all available from my app. I can control all that. And when you press one of these things, like right now, I'm going to turn on my standard winter. I'm just going to do it from here. And I press and hold it. You know, it's going to start that. And well, we're going to have to do face ID. Then it's going to say use a pin. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to hide it. So, so it's a super secret. But right now, um, it's saying climate start requested. And it's been sent to the vehicle. And, you know, I'm, I'm probably 500 yards from the car inside a building. And it always says, well, it's going to take two minutes. It doesn't. It takes 20 seconds. So that's climate start, which is really important. And then equally important, this thing will locate my vehicle. Um, I can put boundaries on where my vehicle is going to go. I can put restrictions on it. Um, but most importantly, I can hit the charge settings from here. I can precondition the battery uh, if I turn that on, right? Uh, I can have it notify me. I can set presets, customize my own limits, which I've got down here, 80% AC charging limit. You know, I might set that to 60, you know, if I'm in town. But I can do this all from the app and tell it to start charging and apply, uh, which is great. And, and this is on top of the great software in the car that lets, me, that lets me set this up and get it going. I mean, it really, really, really is nice. Um, and so that's the Hyundai app in a nutshell. Uh, and if you own a car and someone hasn't taught you or you haven't looked into the software that goes on the phone for your car, you're missing out. Get that done, okay? Uh, Plug share symbol uh, looks like this. You can see it right there. I just tapped it and the first thing it comes up with is a map. And that map is going to show you all the chargers in your area. That's what it's going to do. As you pull out, it's going to populate it. Now I've got filters set. The most important thing when you use plug share is that you set the filters for your car, right? I've got all filters. I've got it set up for CCS chargers as of this time. Um, it's not going to show me Tesla chargers with magic docs that I can use in mine. But it's going to, and I've got any count, I don't care how many chargers there, I just want chargers. I've got it set for dining because I prefer that. You know, not, normally, you know, I might have 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to do it at a time when I want to eat lunch. That's a great time to charge a car. So I've got that set. Um, you can hide dealerships. You can hide restricted access. Well, that makes sense that, you know, I really don't want to find that. I don't want to have to go beg to use a charger. Uh, I've got it, including chargers that are coming soon because I like to keep up to date on what's going on. And, and we're pretty much set. So I'm going to click on this. And in my VAT map view, there are 26 chargers that are available. Well, let's say I need to go to Wellington 
Wellington's a little town north of Fort Collins, kind of a bedroom community for the most part. Uh, they have got a great set of charge point chargers there. So if I press on Wellington, uh, it's at the come and go. I didn't make that up. That actually is the name of the store. Uh, and if I click on that, it's going to show me what's there. Well, now it's showing me under repair. I've got a little bit of a repair issue going on. And what I've got is right now four of four available and they're 350 kilowatts. Actually, I think they're a little lower than that. Uh, and you've got a Chatamo up to 200 kilowatts, which no Chatamo car can use that kind of energy anyway. And I'll, it'll show me the cost. How much is this going to cost me? Well, that's not bad. 35 cents a kilowatt. That's not, wait a second. Now we look and see the fine print. That all looks good, except you've got this little thing. Station parking, 20 cents after three minutes. So I could charge for three minutes, but after that, it's 20 cents a minute. So really now, this is a 55 cent a minute uh, kilowatt charger. Uh, what's interesting about that is they're charging by the minute for parking, but charging by the kilowatt for energy. Uh, and, you know, that that uh, is how they're going to make their money. Now, you're going to look at that and say, my God, that's expensive. I, I don't want to, I don't want to charge it. Well, maybe you'll make a different choice. Maybe you'll look for free chargers. But honestly, folks, 95% of the time I charge at home, I don't really care when I go out somewhere that it's a little more expensive because overall, you know, my charging costs in four pounds are eight cents a kilowatt off peak. It's dirt cheap. It's $2 and 30 cents to put a hundred miles of fuel in my Ionic five. It's dirt cheap, so the 5% I go on the road and have to pay somewhere, I, I, I don't break out in a, in a sweat. I just don't, because overall, you've got to balance that cost off. So that's how it works. But the other thing that's really good about this is the check-in, right? When you charge there, if something's wrong or something's not right, or you really like it and you have a great experience, you write a little note, you check in, and that tells the whole community what's going on at that charger. And it will help you avoid going to a charger that isn't working. Like Todd was here on 1, 2, uh, 24, uh, you know, probably ate lunch there, around lunchtime. Uh, EV6, he charged uh, 60 kilowatts, it says. Uh, later on, Todd was there on the 29th of December. And he let me know that two were up and running, two were down. Um, a little more detail, things look disheveled, vandalized, but it's, you know, it's nice to be charging. And he's in a 22 EV6, so you know that guy can charge fast. You know, when he plugs in on a warm battery, that car is a wonderful charging car. And to me, this is what makes PlugShare great. What makes PlugShare great is this community that, that you get with this app. So take part in that, use that app. You're going to like it because it's going to show you all the brands. And if you're in the middle of nowhere, you're going to need to see all the brands because um, you, you might not be able to be picky if you're in the middle of North Dakota. Uh, you're just lucky to find a charger in some areas of North Dakota, although they've got two Electrify Americas up and running now. God bless North Dakota. So that's PlugShare, and I, I, I really, really, really like that app. The next app we're going to talk about is ChargePoint, and uh, ChargePoint is one of my favorite companies. They produce really rock solid chargers. A lot of them are 62 kilowatt. I mean, I wish there were more, but there are more and more big chargers they're putting in. Sterling's got themselves. Uh, Colorado, which is about an hour and a half drive from here, has a big 200 kilowatt, and Wellington, north of town here, has a 200 kilowatt. So they're starting to put in chargers that will really make a difference, especially if you own a car with 800 architecture. But this is what the app looks like. You need to get this one, folks. And I just opened it up, and of course, I'm charging right now. I've uh, I put 19 miles in my car, it's telling me. I'm, I'm, I'm charging on uh, one of their level two chargers here at the dealership, because hey, if I ever get a chance, I always use level two chargers over the fast chargers, because it's better for my car. It'll be better for your car. Uh, but this is a slow one, it, you know, 4.82 kilowatts. This thing, it, it, the most I've ever seen it put out is five. And it's telling you in an hour and five minutes, I've gotten five kilowatts of energy, which folks is, you know, roughly 15 miles. So it's not the greatest, but uh, that's just because it's a level two. We didn't put in a big enough circuit into it. But 
when we take a look at this, what I like about this is it gives me a map like most of them do. And if I just simply pinch, it's going to take me to uh, where all the charge point chargers. These are just charge point. You know, there, there are a lot of them. And I'm just going to go back up to Wellington. We were there before looking at those chargers. And this is what it looks like when you're on the app. It's at the come and go. Uh, and you simply choose the charger that you're at. If I click on one, this is PL2. Uh, and then if I'm there, it's a 200 kilowatt charger. I just plug in and hit start charging and it will work. It will work every time. There's never going to be a problem. Now I'm not there, so I'm not going to push that. But it is a great little uh, charger. And so uh, go use that one if you get a chance. Uh, and, you know, for the most part, one of the biggest hassles people have uh, with with all kinds of chargers is how hard it is to hook up. It takes too long. It takes time for the charger to communicate with the car, the car to communicate with the charger. The app doesn't quite work right. That None of that stuff happens with ChargePoint. It just, you just plug it in, hit start, or uh, take the app and put it right next to the charger uh, when it's open, and it just works. Uh, uh, it, it works, and it works well. So this is a must-have app uh, that you have, and it's so easy to use. The next app I'm going to show you is Electrify America. That's what the symbol looks like for Electrify America. Hey, folks, this is a, a, a very good little app. You know, what I like about it is, is that, you know, when I press it, it puts me right into the map mode. Uh, I can take this down and I can see where all the Electrify Americas are just by doing this. And, you know, Electrify Americas are going to be fast chargers. You don't have to worry about getting a 50 kilowatt charger for the most part unless it's being repaired. And you could just kind of squeeze this map down and it starts to show you all the Electrify Americas across the country. Where are they located? It's it's not hard to travel with these folks. I've I've gone out to San Francisco twice. I've gone to Portland, Oregon twice driving a car. I drive to Wisconsin all the time using an electric car. Going to Texas for barbecue in March. I mean, with the chargers as close as they are, there are very few places that I cannot travel to. You know, I can head right over to Salt Lake City, takes me to California, and California is just a gold mine of chargers. They're everywhere. A lot of electric cars, though, but they're, they've got a lot of chargers. So that's the advantage. This really is a nationwide network, you know, in the past where there were areas that weren't quite so good, but we're starting to fill in the gaps. Electrify America, they've got two in North Dakota, for God's sakes. I never thought that would happen. Been a long time coming. And you can see right now, we've got this corridor completed between South Dakota and Minneapolis now. We've actually got a corridor that you can drive from one place to another. So the charging network is improving. And then on top of that, we're going to put the Tesla network uh, on top of this. And so charging is going to be good. But this is really rather simple to use. I'm, I'm sitting in Colorado, and I'm just going to hit Wisconsin here. And I'm looking at Schofield, Wisconsin, near Wausau, which didn't have a charger. And, you know, I did a video on Wisconsin being an electric desert. Well, this charger helped make it uh, a much better place to drive. And it's going to show me directions how to get there. If I press directions, it's going to tell me how many miles to get there. Uh, and I'm just going to do that. Now, it's going to be a gazillion miles. It might be a little out of range. It's only a 1,000 miles away. But it goes on Apple Map, and that will give me turn-by-turn -turn directions of how to get to that particular place. And you can see it right now. And maybe not a good idea to go there today because we've got winter weather advisories and you know at least a foot and a half of snow they've had. But this is what Electrify America does for you. And Tesla owners need to have this app because... You know what? It's actually cheaper to charge at Electrify America on most counts, and it's faster for a lot of Tesla owners to do that. My experience with my Tesla is it was quicker to charge at Electrify America than it was to go to a Tesla charger, because a lot of the Tesla chargers aren't 250, they're 150. And so, you know, this is getting to the point where it doesn't matter what car you drive, um, you know, you go to the charger that works best for you in that particular situation, whether you drive a Tesla or a, a a combined charger car. So in a nutshell, that's how this app works. Um, you know, when you buy a new car, Hyundai, or you buy a car from uh, BW or many other manufacturers, they're going to give you 
a couple years of free service. And that's not hard to do. You know, when you hit home, you know, you can simply go and add uh, premium charging to your account, right? Here's, here's premium offers, right? You click on that. I've got a 23 Ionic 5 charging plan, 30 minutes, just uh, a DC charging for free. That's for two years. It, that's all there is to it. Just go to the charger, plug in, and follow the procedures I outline in my video, which I have posted on the bottom. Uh, how to get Electrify America to work every time, and you're not going to have a problem. And actually, right now, uh, for those of you who are using Apple Wallet or Google Pay, uh, you could put a, a, a credit card in your, your electric wallet and just touch those chargers, and that's working well now. I, I do it all the time. Now, it's working just fine for me. Uh, so go ahead and do that. So Electrify America is one of those apps that you really need. So we've reached the point where we're going to talk about one of my favorite apps, which is a better route planner. And uh, a better route planner kind of gives me a very Tesla-like experience. So, you know, this is kind of what the icon looks like. I'm just going to click that right here. And it's, it's a fairly simple app to use. All you do is put in your car and your starting stats. Uh, and the route planner will plan a route for you from your starting point to your end point, And it will show you all the chargers in between, how long you have to charge at that charger. And it also tells you how much energy you have when you pull into a charger. So, you know, pretty much what they did was they took the Tesla style of, of planning a route and, and put it into this app. Uh, so you don't need to have a Tesla to do this. Uh, and so let's just take an example of how this works, all right? The first thing it's going to show me is a map. It's going to show me my location right there. Um, it's going to ask me about what car I own, which is a, a Hyundai uh, Long Range all-wheel drive. It asks me how much charge I'm going to have in that car when I start out, which is 100%. Uh, and, you know, I don't want any less than 10% fuel when I arrive at a station. Uh, and then it's going to ask me, you know, what type of route do I want to take? Do I want to take a route with fewer stops but charging longer? Or do I want to have short uh, charging sessions but many more of them? And really, I prefer to charge more often with less fuel because it's faster, right? I mean, as a battery gets full, it doesn't uh, charge as efficiently. So I'm going to put this and I'm going to go right here and kind of tap that. and, and set my preference. I'd rather stop more often uh, and charge to a lower level. All right. So we've got that set in and now it's going to ask me where do I want to go? Well, I've used this thing to go out to Portland. I've used it to go to Madison frequently. So I do have saved routes in here, but I'm just going to click on Madison, Wisconsin, uh, my hometown where I was born. Uh, and it's going to take me from my position, which is Crossroads Hyundai here and route across the country. So all I have to do is hit plan and then I got to wait. You know, you got to wait for it to uh, uh, figure out what that route's going to look like and it's going to start pulling up stations along the way. Uh, and then it's going to give you a map that kind of looks like this, right? It's got all the stations that I'm going to need to stop at. And I've asked it to stop more frequently. Now, None of these routes, folks, are, are thought out by a lot of uh, artificial intelligence, right? You have to use your own mind and figure things out if that's going to work for you. Now, I would prefer to stop only at Electrify America as often as possible, but I didn't tell it to do that. I just wanted to show you that this will pull up chargers from all sorts of charging networks, not just Electrify America. And you're going to notice that at each one of these stops, it's going to tell me, you know, how long I'm going to be there. 19 minutes, 16 minutes, 12 minutes, 11 minutes. I mean, it did exactly what I asked it to. More stops, shorter charging times. And you can see it's going to start me in Electrify America in Fort Morgan. Uh, then we're going to the Wagon Wheel Conoco. Uh, I'll end up at that station with just 24% fuel left but I'm only going to charge to 57. Now, am I really going to just charge to 57? No, I will charge some percentage points above it and have this recalculate as I go. 
You know, I don't like uh, uh, being a guy who uh, is worried about, am I going to make it to the next stop? I always add more than this suggests. Safe rather than sorry. I, I, I'm pretty conservative when I drive. But this gives you an idea that, A, I can do this route with this because there are definitely uh, enough chargers. And it's going to tell me that I can safely uh, uh, make it using a number of networks. Like, for example, uh, uh, we've got a Casey's here I'm going to stop at that is Shell Recharge. Because Shell has gotten into the charging game. Well, their chargers are usually pretty good. Oh, there's a lot of them around the Madison, Wisconsin area anyway. So I don't mind doing that. And then I just continue on, Electrify America, Electrify America, Electrify America. Here's an EV Connect that I would charge at uh, for 55 minutes. Probably not a fast charger because it's obviously not all that quick. But you get the concept. Uh, this will help me out. And then you engage your brain and figure out, well, is that stop really going to work and is there something better? Might even use PlugShare to do that. Uh, and so I would override this if I had a better idea. Uh, so that's kind of how it works. I just hit the drive button now and I start my route. And it starts me out right from here. I'm going to travel 130, one hour and 33 minutes. Uh, right now I've got this in kilometers for some reason, 176 kilometers. Uh, we know 100 kilometers is 60 miles. So, so it's going to give you, and I, of course you can put that into uh, the English system uh, as well. But it's really a pretty slick app, and it should be one of your resources. And it's particularly good when you've never driven a route, or if you're new to EVs and you're wondering, hey, can I get from uh, this location I'm at to Davenport, Iowa? Or can I get to Bismarck, North Dakota? Or, you know, wherever you're going to go. And it will give you an idea if you can safely take that route. So this is a better route planner. Uh, good little piece of software. You got to have this in your arsenal. All right. And last but not least, folks, you're going to be, you know, you might, you need a Tesla app now, folks. You need to have that. I just did a video on going to a Tesla charger with a magic dock. It was great. Tesla app looks like this. You have to put in your credit card, folks. Uh, there is no way to use a credit card at a Tesla charger. It doesn't work. It's all through the app, which is the beauty of this charging system, right? It's less complicated. So all I have to do is I've told this app already that I have a non-Tesla car. I click on Find Us and I just shrink the map a little bit. And guess what? It's going to show me where those chargers are and how many of those chargers are available, right? And uh, uh, you know what? Most of these are located in the absolute boondocks, right? So I can go all the way out to Kremlin, right? That's, that's way out there. Uh, Colorado. There is no CCS charger there. I mean, this is it. So, but now I've got magic docks there and all I have to do is drive there, right? Click charge here at the bottom of the screen and just choose my charger. These are all the chargers there that have magic docks. That's a lot of chargers compared to what you normally see at Electrify America. You know, th there's one down near, near Denver that has 15 magic docks. It's just, it's beautiful. All I do is tap on which one I met, click on that button, unlock the adapter and plug it in my car and then just hit start charging and you're done. It does the rest and it charges pretty quickly even in uh, a car with 800 volt architecture, pretty much with a warm battery. I was charging at 100 kilowatts from the start at 6 or 7% all the way to 80%. Well, that's not bad. You know, Teslas themselves might start at 225, 230. But by the time they get to 80%, they've dropped well below what I get using my CCS car. So the experience overall is a good one. You need to get this app uh, and you need to enjoy your electric cars. Apps make your experience work. And remember, of all these apps, which one is the most important? It's the one that came with your car because that app allows you to use all the comforts of your car. It makes owning, an, there's nothing like having your car parked in a garage, pre-starting it, and in 15 minutes that car is at whatever temperature you want it at. There's no pollution coming out of the tailpipe. No one's going to get carbon monoxide poisoning. And you're going to get into this warm car and you can say, hey, this is why I own an electric car. It's not just because of torque and power. 
It's because it's comfortable. So, hey, thanks for joining my channel. I'm so glad you came today to visit me. Uh, I hope you support this channel by, by giving the, the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I love doing these videos. My mission is to get as many people driving electric cars as possible and to make that experience a good one. Uh, and so, once again, thanks for being here. This is Principal Bob, the Electric Principal. We'll see you soon.